Hi, it's Andrew again. I'm going to start another tutorial today on how to uh, start up a virtual device. So basically you can have ver different versions of Android running on your computer. Uh, and these will be the stock AOSP ROMs. They're not going to be um, your typical um, sense or you know UI infused ROMs. What you're going to need to do is go back into your um, SDK folder and go into tools and load up that uh, Android folder on uh, <clears throat> this will load up your SDK and AVD manager um, before you can actually start up an AVD you're gonna have to actually download the those uh, tools for each platform that we skipped last time so I mean if you don't if you want to skip the 1.5, 1.6 those are really outdated and even 2.1 is getting to be outdated now so um, you can pretty much skip those and only install the ones you want or you can just install all of them uh, I'm gonna for the sake of this tutorial download all of them and I will check back with you once they're done installing let me just accept all alright okay now that you have finished record uh finish um downloading it. it took about 10 minutes for me on a decent wi-fi connection um you have no left and then now you can actually do a virtual device uh you'll also need to download those tools if you will be doing any app development um those tools really come and help out and especially like when you're testing out the app and everything like that um Another program you'll use for app development would be Eclipse. It probably would be your best bet because you can actually install more development tools in that. And pretty much it'll guide you through what's possible and what's not. Like when you're actually putting in the Java code, if something isn't right, it'll actually error out and show you where the errors are, which are really nice. Um, we'll probably get into that a little bit later. For now, we're going to just do a virtual machine, and this is going to be where you decide what you want to do. Um, I like to name my virtual devices what I'm actually going to be using. So let's say Honeycomb. I can do a target of uh, 3.2. And we'll just create this. A We'll use the default settings. And now when you run this, actually start it uh, like using a 10 inch what, 10 inch screen size that's diagonal that'll that's what most tablets use anyway so this is actually going to be pretty much more or less what the Android tablets today are going to look like It does take a little bit, um, quite a bit of a while to load up on the computer. Uh, this is probably because it's not really optimized for Intel CPUs or anything like that. Uh, and I, even using my quad-core computer at home, it it really does still take a long time to boot up for the first time, and every time actually. This generic Android boot up screen will be on like every um, emulator. It doesn't matter if it's like you're using Android 1.5 or doing Android um, Gingerbread, which is 2.3, you're still going to get the same boot up screen.
in the meantime, I'm actually going to load up the SDK, or actually, um, sorry, terminal. And I'll show you that you can actually communicate to this, to the emulator. So what I did is you're going to change directory CD again to Android SDK and inside the folder platform tools because that's where the ADB um, bridge, like the Android debugging bridge is. So you can actually make sure that your device is on, which here you can actually visually see it because it's on the computer. But like let's say you had a phone or a tablet and you wanted to make sure that it was communicating to the computer properly, you can actually type in ADB devices. If you do not have debugging mode turned on on the phone, you should get nothing. But since we have the emulator running, you can actually see the emulator. You actually can see multiple devices if you want to. Like right now, I'm going to hook up my, my phone, and you'll see two devices if I run that again. Here's your emulator. Um, it's basically just honeycomb and it runs really slow on a computer. Incredibly slow. Now, my MacBook has been pretty much stretched to its limits, period, so I don't expect it to actually be any better anytime soon, especially since I'm actually using the screen capture tool. So uh, that's obviously taking some. RAM away from running this properly. But if you wanted to actually test an app, uh, you have an emulator or any kind of, uh, any em emulator going, you can actually test out your apps in the emulator before you go and um, publish it to the Android market. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. Just pretty much how to get an emulator running, and probably next time we're going to build a CyanogenMod mod ROM um, and then have it running in the emulator so you can actually see what it's like to build and test it out and make sure that it runs okay and we'll be using uh, Ubuntu for that because I personally like building in Ubuntu alright ciao